हरे कृष्णा धनवट प्रणाम डियर डिवोटीज टुडे रीडिंग फ्रॉम द बुक मैसेज ऑफ गॉड हेड बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्रीला प्रभुपाद वी विल कंटिन्यू रीडिंग द फर्स्ट चैप्टर ट्रांसडेंटल नॉलेज सो वेन वी स्पीक ऑफ लिविंग एंटिटी वी मस्ट see the body and the mind as the two outer coverings two layers of paraphernalia while we see the living force or spirit soul as the chief central figure the outer coverings are temporary arrangements and therefore everything dependent on the outer covering is also a temporary arrangement happiness or distress perceived in relation with the temporary arrangement of the body and mind are also temporary thus in bhagavad gita the personality of god is shri krishna says oh kunti all forms of happiness and distress such as winter cold or summer heat are due to material sense perception only they come and go according to the law of nature and they are therefore to be tolerated without our being disturbed one who is not disturbed by all these comings and goings of temporary happiness and distress he alone becomes a fit person to attain eternal life but at the present stage of our existence it is difficult to be unaffected by the temporary happiness and distress pertaining to the body and mind nor it is possible at the present to assert that we are unidentified with the body and mind thus acquiring transcendental knowledge does not mean that we become indifferent to our present state of affairs it means that we should not be overwhelmed by the comings and goings of happiness and distress we must know the nature of those temporary states of material happiness and distress it will be sheer stupidity to ignore them as it will be to remain indifferent in matters concerning the spirit soul on the basis of which the material body and mind exist still if a person is fortunate enough to understand the spirit soul and to get a taste for transcendental knowledge then even in the midst of worldly happiness and distress which pertains to the body and mind he will remain indifferent and relish transcendental peace real peace can be obtained only in that transcendental stage of existence that is the state of real contentment if after a long time away from home somebody embarks on a homeward journey the pleasure of being homeward bound diminishes the accompanying distress of the journey the inconvenience of traveling becomes subordinate to the pleasure of heading homeward similarly for one who is headed back home back to godhead by tint of transcendental knowledge the material miseries of the body and mind are insignificant sense perception is the cause of feeling all sort of happiness and distress form taste odor sound and touch are different sense perceptions which render happiness or distress in cooperation with the mind in winter bathing in cold water gives us pain but in summer the same cold water gives us pleasure in winter fire gives us pleasure and warm but in summer the same fire gives us distress thus neither fire nor water has any intrinsic power to give us happiness or distress but they appear to us as agents of happiness or distress according to our mood of sense perception in various circumstances therefore nothing that exists in the world is either an object of happiness or an object of distress rather happiness and distress are simply subjective that is dependent on our sense perception as they relate to our eternal process of thinking feeling and willing but such temporary sensations of happiness and distress pertaining to the act of thinking feeling and willing under a false ego are eternally different from the spirit soul and are therefore unreal reality thus whatever advancement of knowledge mundane scholars have made whether in art or in science if that knowledge is without reference to the eternal spirit soul it is but a manifestation of illusionary modes of nature that encompass and limit the material body and mind real peace and happiness can never come about through such advanced materialistic knowledge rather as sri krishna the personality of god it confirms in bhagavad gita only those who cultivate transcendental knowledge in relation to the eternal spirit soul 
and without being disturbed by temporary happiness and distress, will be able to escape the cruel hand of birth, death, old age and disease and become truly happy by regaining their eternal spiritual life. We therefore suggest that all those who have tried their utmost to do good for others but have failed despite all honest endeavors, such approach Sri Krishna or his bona fide servitors following the footsteps of Arjuna. One should try to do good for others but only after knowing perfectly how to do good for others. Otherwise. If one embraces others in a false sense of altruism, one can get only a temporary benefit for himself in the shape of some profit, adoration or distinction. A Hitler, a Mussolini or any other leader of that materialistic persuasion may offer his followers the mental concoction of doing good together in violent or non-violent programs. And by such acts of so-called be violence, the leader may get recognition from his followers for some time. But the followers for whom this kind of leader has endeavored to do good will never get any lasting benefit out of such temporary beneficial work. A void will be left with the progress of all such be violent activities. In fact, the followers will be put into more and more distress by following the path of chalked out by this kind of so-called leader. If a blind man pretends to help another blind man, cross a road, then both the blind leader and the blind follower shall fail into the further darkness of some unseen ditch. One who is devoid of transcendental knowledge is just like a blind man. Such a blind man must first eradicate his blindness before he can attempt to lead other to light. Everyone who happens to take his birth in India is a potential benefactor of others because he, it is on Indian soil that the culture of transcendental knowledge has been most elaborately presented from the ancient times to the present. The saint and the sages of Bharat Varsha, as India has been long been known, never try to satisfy artificially the needs of the body and the mind exclusively. They always cultured knowledge of the spirit soul, which is transcendental to the material body and mind. Even now, the saint and the sages continue to do so, in spite of all difficulties. But it would be sheer stupidity if Indian people attempted to do good to others without first themselves attaining the transcendental knowledge. Now, if we want to acquire transcendental knowledge, our first duty will be to understand that the spirit soul is eternal truth. The, exist the external ingredient, the body and the mind which develop around the spirit soul are all relative or the partial truths. In the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the personality of Godhead explains this fact elaborately. The spirit soul which pervades this body is eternal and thus one should understand that no one can destroy the ever existing spiritual soul. Although this material body is subject to annihilation, the proprietor of the body, the soul is eternal. Therefore, ocean of Bharata, knowing this eternal truth, you should fight. Both he who thinks the spirit soul can slay and he who thinks that the spirit soul can be slain are ignorant of the fact that the spirit soul is neither slayer nor slain at any time. The spirit soul is never born nor can he ever die and because he is eternal he has no past, present or future. Although very cold, he is always fresh and he is never annihilated. Even after the annihilation of body, one who understands the soul is eternal and indestructible. How can he hurt or kill anyone? It is only the outer body and the mind that are destroyed. The body and the mind are just like a person's outer clothes. When his clothes are old, a person discards them and puts on a new set of clothes. Similarly, the soul gives up his old body at death. He takes on a new body. The spirit soul can never be cut by a sharp sword, burned by fire or affected by water or air. Thus the spirit soul is eternally indestructible, non-inflammable, non-evaporable and non corrodible He is permanent, all-pervading and eternal. He cannot be explained by any human language nor can he be perfectly conceived of by any human mind. He remains always unchangeable, knowing all these facts, one should not lament over the death 
of the body hare krishna shri la prabhupada ki jai thank you